Hello, everybody. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Beth. Um, before I go into anything else, uh, there was a comment on the um, uh, broadcast of last Sunday uh, that asked what... No, let me read it to you exactly as it it was written. In just a second. Uh, da, da, da. So the question was first of all it was and the, we had talked about it during it how do you cure the piece it doesn't need to be baked because there are pages inside there is no uh, worry about that because as we talked during the other live uh, paper has an in ignition uh, point of 451 degrees Fahrenheit like in the book uh, so the temperature we need to do uh, to we reach in order to bake the clay is far from that so no worries about anything uh, and there was I guess it wasn't on this anyway it was how do you how do you seal everything uh, so, hi Susan, hi Judy, hi Alessio, hi Deborah, hi Carol, hi Ellen, hi Robbie. Um, the response is you don't, it depends actually what did you use in order to uh, obtain all this sand picking um, aspect, all this sand picking look. And by the way, as a short reminder, I was one of the over 10,000 subscribers channels that were selected to beta test the instant closed captioning. So if you at any time have any kind of issue with understanding what I'm saying, um, YouTube has gotten pretty good. I mean, I guess they study each uh, creator's um, accent and way of pronouncing things. Um, but I am one of the beta testers for the instant closed captioning. So if you do want to see the closed captioning, if at any time you have any kinds of uh, problems understanding what I'm saying, uh, please, there is a small, um, actually, let me show you where you do that. I'll show you on the PC, but it's pretty much the same on the... Uh, tablet or whatever so you go here where you see CC and you enable now honestly I have no idea and I'm actually going to try but I don't think that the translation auto translation yeah it, it only works I have auto translation uh, uh, enabled on my channel so if at any time uh, you speak another uh, language and you want uh, an auto translation it's not always perfect because it's google generated but i do have auto translation so all you have to do is to go and check in the um, uh, settings go to youtube auto translate from english to whatever your language is uh, sometimes i would look if it's in a for the languages that i speak and i try to fix whatever errors there might be but um otherwise it is understandable at least you understand what i'm what the heck i'm talking about okay so yeah i couldn't find your comment i forgot where you asked it so the ceiling part is all why did i leave this on the ceiling part is all about what you used if you use uh for the antiquing if you use perlex or any other mica powder uh, except perfect pearls you will have to seal it now can you seal it what can you seal it with uh, I don't recommend using um, 
a, a glossy varnish because an antique thing is not going to be shiny I use I recommend using a mate varnish let me see even the plain I think I have one here no this is a gloss uh, anyway even the plain sculpey this one is gloss but there is one that is they also have the uh, the satin finish so ça c'est très bon j'espère que tu comprends ce que je dis um et bienvenue à propos uh, so hi donna hi victoria hi chris um so if you use perfect pearls you don't have to worry because it's not going to i think that this is what yeah the top i used perfect pearls and it's not nothing on my uh it's very sunny i saw outside i didn't turn on the lighting for the table if you use no this was the perfect pearl sorry this was the wax so it you might get a few things coming off but that is just what was um off sausage clairborns what was sausage clairborn what was translated So the first thing that you want to do before anything else is to shine a little bit your, as I said, not super shiny, but you still want it to have a little bit of a metal look. The same as I did on the back. You can see it does have the metallic look. And here, remember, I used the artisan, uh, Franco Garcia artisan powders. And on top of that, I put the Art Alchemy waxes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it happens. Oh, my God. I'm going to interrupt because this is way too funny. Um, I have a few of my subscribers are, um, you know, they, they don't hear. They are deaf. So in the beginning, when I started talking, instead of having just subtitles, uh, they were a little upset because I cannot hear what you're saying. So it was it was so much better for me with the subtitles, and uh, they didn't know that I had the closed captioning enabled. So I just I told them just go to the closed captioning. The problem was that at one point, a couple years ago, I had a whole bunch of uh, international people attending the my lives, and there were a lot of uh, French people. And there were some Italian people, some Spanish people, uh, some people from Brazil, uh, just to name a few. But I'm talking about the, the languages that I do speak or at least I understand. Um, and this lady who was just a sweetheart. Uh, she emails me one day. She's like, um, I've been trying to watch your past live because, you know, the closed captioning translations usually appear like an hour or two after the live is uh, or the video itself is uh, published but there's a lot of gobbledygook like okay what had happened <coughs> i was also talking other languages and the closed captioning was doing exactly what beth says translating it to sausage clairborne <laughs> So, yeah, if you are, <laughs> if I'm talking a different language, it's not going to look good in the closed captioning. Anyway, so what I'm using, uh, there are these uh, little things for dust. They are a very, very, very soft cloth. And you can find them in the Amazon Influencer Store in the waxes uh, section. Because these I found that they are the best for um, uh, shining. Hi, Christy. So, what you want to do is to simply buff it a little bit because you want to make it a little bit more metallic looking. And you can do that on perfect pearls as well. You don't have to do it just on the wax. It's going to still look pretty because remember we did all that polishing with the tip of the finger and all of a sudden it's going to look perfect. Now the acrylic part that we did here, 
the acrylic bonds with the polymer clay if you have, if you apply it before baking the clay so again you don't have to worry about it coming off so right now we have a full perfect antique looking um, journal cover now let's go forward and create some um, first of all I'm going to make two metal um, things here because remember I said don't worry about this portion because you're going to cover it anyway so let's try and create this a little bit bonsoir Dominique so if I go I'm going to also have to look you look in what you have obviously a lot of the stuff that you have there but the way that I see it sorry I used to work for the Air Force and I had an Air Force retired Air Force hobby so I have I still have a whole bunch of stationery in around the house so this would be our journal right and we have a delimitation here so what I intend to do and that's what I wanted to show you how to do this I'm not sure if I'm going to show it live or if I'm going to make it on a separate tutorial because I want to or at least we're going to take a break from the journals but i want to have at least next uh, sunday uh, valentine's day uh, focused but what i'm going to want to do is one of those closures that comes over and that one i'm going to do it with the fabric armature and liquid clay and of course i will show you how to do all that and uh, of course with the magnetic thingy here actually i'm not even sure if i'm gonna do the magnetic or if i'm going to do the uh, lock like for those tiny chests but anyway um let's see what do i want to have as a let me bring because here you just go by what you have okay let me bring my charms jewelry box Organizer. And by the way, I'm getting a lot of questions on how am I organizing my jewelry findings by colors, by no. I organize them by type by colors it would be very hard so I would have one of these with like you can see here are end caps and I put all the colors that I have in here this is all end caps then I would have one for bales and again all types of bales all colors and I have one for ear wires, then one for uh, fastenings, one for magnet uh, stuff. Because I found that when I'm looking for something, I'm primarily, when I go looking for something, I'm not looking for the color, I'm looking for the type. Or uh, let's say I will, I'm going to look for a ear wire, or I'm going to look for... Um, uh, bale and then I'm looking for the color and the color is much easier to define to find when you have everything of the same type then if you have one uh, organizer all with the same color and trying to find the type at least this is how my mind works I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world but this is how I'm organizing mine let me put this back Hi Liana, hi Tina. So
so let me see if I, what I have here that could be used in steampunk. So this looks pretty much like an industrial gear. It's not a clockwork because I don't want to do a clockwork punk. I want to essentially do an industrial punk. Then I got some keys, little key charms. I can use one of them. And I guess this can be used as well. Let me see what else do I have. I have some little charms here. Because you can put some other stuff, not necessarily industrial. These are all because we you can go like compass style and and things. So I think this one should look should be good I don't have any I don't think I have copper in these ones let's get the moon as well let's get the star and the moon and I'm gonna get them in the old um, how you call it in Europe it's called alpaca it's not brass. It's that mix of brass and tin. Again, I'm having a brain fart. Then I don't know if I should put any crosses. I can create some pipes. Let me see what other gears I have here. This looks more like a clockwork gear. But I need one that's different than the one that I have there. Mm, these are all... This looks more like an industrial gear, not so much as a clockwork gear. And maybe this. And what else? Just for the sake of it, let me get one of these owls. Again, you just go by what you have. And I have a whole bunch of, I have a whole section of charms in the influencer store. So you can go look at your heart's desire. The ones that I have here are not really steampunk. They are more piratey and stuff. They are not definitely not steampunk. So I guess I'm gonna be with this. This should be enough for what I need. So let me get this out of the way. So let's see how we are going to place these. If I get that there, and then I can attach another pipe here. So let's see how it would look like. If I get this here, and then I attach this. Like this here, it would be good. And then make a little full leather fastening for it right here and then up on here I can make I can place these and kind of connect them with a pipe If you have watched the beginning of my former, I mean, past 
uh, sponsor live no not bronze it's uh, let me search it just give me just a minute it's the poor man's silver okay German silver that's the it's the German silver I don't know why I couldn't remember it German not man silver German <laughs> close captioning said man silver for some reason anyway so let's see where am I further than that I'm going to place these like this, one on one end, one on the other. Yeah, because it's practically made with several types of alloys, but essentially it's like brass and tin. Okay, so if I put this here, I wish I had one of those. Remember, sometimes you can find even on the street, there are little metal plates that are like this. I had one of, hold on a sec, give me just a second, because I just got an idea, hold on a sec. I guess I put them somewhere else and right now I don't remember where I uh, put them. Strasvice Galina. So I'm going to put this here and here. And I guess I'm going to need to make something. I'm going to make something that would look uh, pretty much like... Uh, but the stuff that I'm talking about actually i think i can make it you know with what with uh uh blisa pavelka's stamp which is And this is pretty much a must-have stamp if you're into uh, steampunk. Because see, this, these two, these charms kind of talk about uh, shipping and stuff. So let me make a, a sheet of this. Yeah, that doesn't make a jaw. That would be an idea, but... Uh, that doesn't make industrial sense because the steam remember the steampunk comes from steam that's why you have pipes okay so let me make a, a small sheet of black I'm going to get this. What the heck is this label? Hold on. I need my readers. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, I'm gonna get this shipping one. And 
why do I make the sketch? Because some of these things will not really be uh, fixed here with clay or anything. I'm just going to put glue after everything is said and done. So I need to know where they are. So I'm going to put here the sun and the moon with the fragile thing here. Or I might replace this because I was thinking of making a little, uh, whatchamacallit, seascape-like thing with resin. And in that case, I'm going to put the fragile thing here. And if I remember right, there was a... No, there isn't a keyhole. But we can always make a keyhole if I want to put this okay hold on let me grab my eyes and cut this Actually, you know what? No, not like this. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Sorry. I just thought of something else. Let me do that again. Pani Mayu, nie gavar you. Nie ochin gavar you. What I want to do here is leave a little room for screws on the sides. Instead of cutting it all the way in, I'm going to leave a little bit of screws here. And I think I'm going to go for the more of a seascape thing here so this goes here better now i might not use everything okay i'm second guessing my As remember, don't put too much stuff. I said in the very beginning, don't try to overcrowd your uh, steampunk because it's not going to look that good. So if this goes here, this looks fine here. And also think about your elements being quite a fix, not being dangly because that makes for, it, it, they can snag and then it would rip um all your decoration all your embellishment from there so that's not a good um ending so in order to make that here i'm going to actually get just a pinch of white and a pinch of blue give me just a second and make me a tiny, tiny Skinner blend. And just a pinch of blue, because I don't want it to be too dark. And I have no white here, must be on the table. As I said, I'm working on several things at the same time, so. It's somewhere here. Huh? 
die, Anna? That's no problem. Okay, and I'm going to make a little bit of a skinna blend with this. see if I need more blue. I might, but I don't, as I said, I don't want to make it too. Because we want to give the idea of traveling as well. So I'm fanning it, then getting back on it. This is a fast in a blend. As I said, I might need a little bit more blue. a little bit over. And this should be just fine. And more fanning. I'm trying to create also an effect in this one. You saw those lines that started appearing. I'm going to try and take advantage of that. And then I'm going to go through the machine with it. Yeah, this should look just fine. And I think I need this one, just one more smaller. This is the oval Primo cutter. I moved stuff around, so I'm still going towards the old places. I'm going to go with the with the lily. This is something here. I, I'm going to go with the lily petal instead. I'm 
Okay, so this goes here. Like this. And this goes here. And then I will have two long, but let me first I'm gonna take these off. I know where they go because I've noted in the sketch and I'm going to get these on. Hi Gaylene. Hi Fran. So just a little bit of bacon bond. And yeah, I'm getting close to completely finishing cleaning and organizing around the house for from everything that I lost time with and that really helps my creative juices I do have a uh, don't get me wrong I don't like that kind of houses and studio rooms that look like they are for an exhibition or a show and you cannot see any sign of anything being worked anywhere uh, that kind of I wouldn't be able to work in something like that um, I like more stuff like I don't know if you if you have seen um, turtle turtle soup beads uh, working room that kind of stuff I like that it's more uh, warm yes I do thank you Elaine thank you You know, talking about alizarin crimson, it's alizarin crimson. Cicerin come in Bourgogne. Let me see, just a moment. Ungrena. Then in tip the grena. And malheureusement, c'est pas. Il y a aucune autre ligne de de pâte polymère qui fait ça. Donc, tu peux l'obtenir en en mélangeant du rouge, de l'orange et du violet avec plus violet que orange, mais euh, généralement ce serait quelque chose comme euh, pour une part euh, rouge, environ un quart d'orange et un tiers de violet pour l'obtenir. Mais je vais essayer de trouver la traduction. Sorry guys, Dominique is asking me what would be the uh, the equivalent in French of alizarin crimson. Ce serait une cramoisie, mais c'est un peu plus, euh, plus foncé. Je 
je vais te... te montrer le, la couleur elle-même. Ah, je vois. Euh, en quel... Euh, euh, quelle ligne de pâte polymère tu utilises The other book, I still didn't remake it yet. I still have to finish some sponsor tutorials and some tutorials for Valentine. Je, si tu me dis quel pâte polymère, quel digne de euh, pâte polymère tu utilises, si c'est le, le Fimo, le euh, Cernit, je peux te, te dire quoi mélanger pour obtenir ce effet. So, this is going to be by itself. On this one, I'm going to make a little frame okay don't know in minute let me see I'm just uh, searching for uh, the equivalent. She wants to make my uh, faux burl wood. And uh, she's asking how to obtain the alizarin crimson using uh, cernet. Okay, let me see. So we have the regular colors and for the other ones of you. Tu sais, tu as le Bordeaux en le numéro 1, en Cernit. Je crois que si tu mélanges un tout petit peu de uh, coquelicot rouge, Eh, let me voir le violet. Et un tout petit peu de violet. Mais je crois que tu peux utiliser seulement le Bordeaux. Du numéro 1, tu, seras, tu devrais être OK. So, if you have, if you're trying to make that combination, yeah, c'est uh, cramoisis uh, crimson. But alizarin is, uh, it's a specific type of crimson, it's, the, it's a dye that's obtained from the madder plant, and I don't know how the madder plant is called in French. But, uh, no, I, I think that if, if you just use Bordeaux, you should be okay. Donc, seulement utilise le Bordeaux. Okay, now let me make a little... frame here. It's Madder Plant, M-A-D-D-E-R, if you want to search for that. First, let me put some uh, bacon bun here all around uh, this thing. Where's my... I keep losing my eyeglasses. You all know that I use my fingers a lot like tools and stuff. I don't know if the fact that if you paint with your fingers when you're a baby mm, 
makes you for the rest of your life like to get your fingers dirty when you're creating art is anybody else someone who did a lot of stuff like this when they were a kid and now they act the same because I sure do like getting my fingers my hands dirty whenever I create stuff I don't mind even if I'm so careful with my hands and so proud that and try to keep them looking good Oh, I had a question by somebody that why don't I ever trim my fingernails? Because if I do, it hurts. I mean, they were talking about trimming them short. For one, trimming my fin fingernails, it's a whole adventure because they are very thick and I need to use toenail clippers but uh, my nail the nail bed on my finger nails comes very all the way to the top of the finger so if I trim my fingernails short anything that I touch with the top of my fingers hurts because it's almost like my nail bed is exposed you know I'll show you even if I have clay under my fingernail. But uh, there you go. Notice how far forward my nail bed comes on my fingernail. Hold on a second. I need to see what I'm showing you. See, it's all the way here it's all the way here and this is valid for all my fingernails so it's right in the top of the finger so if I trim them very short it hurts I have no practically no protection for anything it's not a pleasant feeling it's not that I like to show off my fingernails I like to put all kinds of nail polish on them, but I'm not doing it to be, oh yeah, I can have long fingernails and you can't, no. And just that it's, that's how I, all my life, I was all my life like that. And as I said, I started going a little bit wonky after I had chemo. They crack like this in length. And if I don't catch them in time, the crack goes into the nail bed and it's very painful. Alrighty. So, I'm uh, getting two strips because I don't have a long enough. But in the middle, I'm going to cut in a diagonal. It might be long enough. Let me see. If I go like this, yeah, it is long enough. Never mind. And what I want to do first before putting it on, naturally, you know what? If you, the way that I'm doing it is more advanced. Let me just do it the plain way so you don't have issues with it. The best way of doing a nice um, frame for that is grab a little bit of blade glad cling wrap yeah see Anna because I've been like this all my life I actually have problems if my fingernails are short I have problems grabbing stuff because I'm used to having long fingernails Right now, my fingernails are short for me. Okay, so simply do put some cling wrap here and let's do a rounded bezel, bezel frame. So, I 
just be very forceful because with that cling wrap in the way it might not cut all the way and you want to go back if but I got it all the way uh, if it doesn't come off like that you might want to go back after you remove and thank you Kelly okay so let me cut in a diagonal here but before I do anything I'm going to put some wax here or you can put perfect pearls because that way it's not going to uh, it's not going to be a pain when uh, trying to put let me get not copper why did I get copper I'm gonna get grass or something Okay, I got the vintage gold, with, which is kind of like brass as well. And it's in the German silver, kind of. Let me put this back on the... I can put this on wax paper or whatever. I just don't want to mess up my... Uh, tile and have to clean it I and again I put this before placing the frame there because I don't want to have to be super careful when I apply it if I apply it after it's baked I have to be very careful not to mess this up right Why did that did I use black? You can use any color, you don't have to use just this. You can use anything. But why I'm making this and looking like a seascape? Because I want to make it look like it's a ship's uh window. I know they are called a certain way, but again I don't remember the word. You know when you're stuck on doing a certain thing and then everything, if you try to do something else, you don't find the words? For the something else, that's me. I've been trying to do a specific thing. And now I have problems finding the words for steampunk. So, I'm always placing, see when I'm cutting like this, I'm always placing the longer part inside, on the inside of the frame. And if you cut it like this, it's the easiest way to set it in place. gently push get it out and you'll have a line here that shows you exactly where you're supposed to cut and the other thing why uh, placing the wax before baking is a good thing because so go in and get it well around here but the other reason is wait just a second 
get everything where it belongs first and then I'll show you why okay you can use any kind of sculpting tool just gently feather whatever ends are not perfectly smooth and then grab the wax again and give it just a touch here uh, also to give you a tip if you want to make it look old you can and this is just a little trick uh, place the wax on the strip that you're going to use for uh, for the frame and let it sit but make it ahead of time let it sit for like an hour and then uh, when you place this start before you place it start gently pull on it to make it a little bit longer and what will happen the some of the wax because you have to put a lot of wax i mean to make sure that you got a good layer of wax the wax will start cracking and you will get a very pretty ancient looking uh, frame thingy but uh, here we just got the regular thing and I forgot to get one more wax, just a second. Now on this you can use if you have the old silver or whatever, but if you use acrylic, use the uh, gunmetal. And if you use these, there's another color called brushed iron. And it gives a more antique looking. And actually, I can show you a really neat effect that you can use with uh, this for all kinds of steampunky stuff. I, I should have made this, I just didn't think about it. But uh, there we have this, and then I'm going to make two screws here. And I'll show you a trick for the screws as well. But before that, let me show you the trick with the brushed iron. And you can do this again with um, what you call it the mud clay. You can use pretty much with any kind of color because you're gonna color the the thing itself. Okay, so let me grab the. you can use chalk pastels you can use pan pastels you can use i'm showing you with the cheapest thing and this is just the effect i'm not going to put this on the journal at all but what i want to select here will be some rust colors okay so i'm going to get this i'm going to get this too and this and I'm going to get myself a little bit of them a little bit of each on the on that black
I have an old video if you look and you can find it also on my blog that talks about imitating oxidized metal using acrylic paint because that's another that's a way of imitating uh, rusted iron with just cheaper acrylic paints but you see just mix them a little bit so that you don't have just one color you'll need at least two colors for this all right let me get this back Red pigment is always the strongest of all pigments. Now, if you have only shiny charms and you're like, oh my god, I don't have money to get new charms, new stuff, just put a little bit of. Uh, with most of them it will work put a little bit of white vinegar in a bowl and put the charms in there and forget about them for two or three days niet galina ai razem razemiu ruski ya ne gavariu okay i told her twice that i don't speak russian okay i understand but it's been so long since i spoke russian I pretty much forgot everything. Okay, let's get just this, uh, whatever. And with this, you know, if you use the powders, you don't have to worry about any kind of release because the powders will act as a release. So I'm going to just this. This the no, I can get the other and. And then we use the brushed iron. See what I'm doing. And very, very gently brush it off. Not all over the piece. You might want to leave some areas naked and some areas like barely brushed. So don't renew the stuff on your finger. But there you go, you have a rusted iron thing and then when you bake this it's going to be all nice and you'll be able to I guess I will do another live during this coming week before Sunday to pretty much finish this because I need to do a bake before continuing to do anything else and as I said I might do a tutorial but yeah this is how the rusted iron effect looks like as you can see it's very rusty and if you want to make it look even more uh, give me just a second let me find my even more uh, authentic old 
I normally use one of these but use it after you apply the wax and there you have it looking really old and whatever and you can use this for all kinds of things um, I remember I did something like this when I lived in uh, Del Rio I wanted to make my um, this that art alchemy brush iron um, I wanted to renew I don't clear the color I first put uh, chalk pastels and then I use this sparsely as you can see and then I just use the a nail brush and it makes it look antiqued so as I was saying I wanted to renew a little bit to make a different look in the kitchen of the house that me and my ex bought there and I just made these little panels that were about the size of this uh, and I made them all with polymer clay in this style and I used uh, actually what I did uh, being on the border of Mexico there were a whole bunch of um, Mexican you know things uh, there and I just went because I'm usually when I go to a new place I manage to make friends <laughs> everywhere and there was this uh, lady who had a, a boutique I don't know how to even call it because she had all kinds of odds and ends and decorations and stuff and she had these tiles that had all kinds some of them uh, were pretty much like uh, 3D uh, Talavera tiles and some of them had just you know, all kinds of little uh, landscapes or hunting stuff, all kinds of stuff. And I went and I got uh, molds of that and then I used on those panels and I did stuff like this. And the kitchen looked so much nicer and then we redid the, the floor with terracotta uh, tiles in all kinds of earthy colors but yeah this is how you obtain and you can make boxes you can make all kinds of things and once it's uh, baked the reddish part doesn't look shiny anymore because now it still looks shiny but once you bake it it won't look shiny anymore you'll only be able to shine the iron part anyway so looking at this actually but no I wanted to do this in German silver look so let's do it in German silver look so what I'm going to do is a sausage so I'm starting with a bead and then I am turning it into a sausage and I need to get hold of my other my bigger acrylic block that's busy with something else I have all kinds of stuff that's carrying things well it did wait we left there in 2000 I left in 2004 and he stayed for six more months and then he left too um, let me see what can I use Do I have one? No. oh my goodness I have all my other acrylic blocks busy with other stuff I have stuff on them by the way if you got this or if you plan on getting this just don't get the regular not this where's the 
get this because all these things in any kind of brand they are they suck go for the liquid I'm trying to find if I have any here or they are all busy I have uh, when I'm working on stuff I have the habit of putting it on uh, on the acrylic plates oh there is there you go I found one I found one because it helps with making a perfectly even sausage oh I might have I didn't check hold on let me check let me check do 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 let me see Man, where's the likes? I don't want the follows, I want the likes. No, I still need seven. I have, let me show, 993. See, I have 993 likes. I do have 1,082 follows, but only 993 likes. So, just share it <laughs> so more people like it all righty so once i do this let me get back on my screens because i lost the screens okay so once i have this nice and long and i'm going to use again this long thing that i absolutely adore that's the Remember, it's the, the blade that you get from Tiny Pandora when you buy the kit with those long triangular thingies to make beads like the paper beads. I don't know how it's called, that's it. I don't know by heart. But it's an excellent, excellent, excellent blade. And it's super rigid and super sharp. So when you need to cut something long, Okay, I'm gonna move the camera because I need to be all above. And I messed up. What the heck? I messed up. Hold on, I need to redo this. Thank you, Janet. I might not be able to. I might have to go with just a line. But I wanted it to make to make it look like pipes. Is this black? This is black. Is this black? Hold on, I found more black. Yeah, it's a bead bead maker. Yeah, I I wish you would sell it just by itself because it it would be great. Maybe we should petition her. I should make a petition. Petition for Tiny Pandora to sell only the blade. <laughs> and that would be something, huh? I'm going to try and make it a little bit thicker. It would be, anyway, it would be much easier to ship and everything okay this should be okay let me try this again <laughs> all righty so see i'm i'm first aligning it with my blade using my blade then I'm going to try and cut it again in half it's just because of my hands I've been horrible 
today with dropping things and everything. Yeah. Uh, I did it. Even if I think it would have been easier to just <laughs> do a, the thing that I showed you before for that. Okay, now let's apply some bacon bond here and we need pretty much a line so let me get this here just for I'm not gonna touch the bacon bond on the ruler just to get the You will not believe through what insane amounts of bacon bond I'm going through. Come on. Alright. So let's get one of them here. to bring it down like if it were to go you know in the so I'm going to cut like this on it so I can create the illusion that the pipe goes in the journal And then the other thing that I'm going to do to make it look more like a pipe. And this one I can put the wax after it's baked. Yeah, I know. And you see, I keep forgetting to put it because normally I put it upside down. I have this, I bought this Lazy Susan from uh, Aldi's. And it's perfect to hold my blades, some of my um, sculpting stuff and all kinds of other things it's perfect and then I have another lazy Susan that I got from Goodwill this is all stuff I'm working on but see that I can put all kinds of things I work with as well with paint brushes and um, both styluses and things I'm trying to get and then I have this other little thing here that I keep all kinds of things like my texture roll pins and smaller rollers, sculpting things and all kinds of other little useful things in here. And then here I have my baking blanks. So hi Francis. Okay, so I'm going to get, I'm gonna get this to the side for a little bit. And I guess I'm gonna give up on this. I'm gonna use on something else because initially I wanted to put leather, but I think that pipe will look better. So I'm going to put this somewhere else. I'm going to maybe put it here. Let's see. So I'm making another little thing here. And this time I'm going to use the regular blade to cut it. And again, I'm going to cut it in half. But what I need, I need to make it look like a steam pipe because we we are doing steampunk, right? So where's my yeah. Can you 
see what I'm doing here? Because I know it's kind of black on black, so. And placing those uh, junction things that pipes have, that those big steam pipes have. take off some of this extra bacon bone here, it's too much. I know it becomes transparent when it bakes, but still. Then another thing that you can do to, give, to make it look even more pipe-like, you can take your exacto knife and very gently very very gently make a line above and one below the juncture and it might not be super visible but it's fine because it's going to become visible when you put wax or acrylic paint on it just a little line here to imitate the junction in regular big pipes because it has to look industrial from the steam power industrial era and then the other thing that you can do Oh, that is never replaceable. I'm going to actually try and do a little bit of garden work today if I manage to get myself not too tired with this. And then put a few dots towards this thing. On this side of the line just put the dots in line because these would look because they are so small they would pretty much look like screws that are used to put these things together and then we'll do the same thing on this side and once again I'm going to use the ruler Please don't tell me anything about the Super Bowl. I cannot stand spectator sports. I'm not going to make anything sportsy. The only sports I've ever watched in my life were gymnastics. Of course, I'm from Romania. I used to be a gymnast to not a professional competitive one. Um, then sometimes I would watch the uh, ice skating definitely I used to watch a lot the Formula 1 but after Ayrton Senna died I just couldn't watch anymore and then uh, the competitions of uh, Again, I forgot how they are called. The, the dancing horses. The trained dancing horses. Okay, and then I'm going to cut another piece of smaller and I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did here and doesn't even have to be on the same levels
So first place it like this, start in the middle, put it here. And don't worry, even if you don't have any back and bond on the sides, it's going to be stuck to the middle, to the raw clay here, so it's going to be just fine. And then push a little bit in and you'll see exactly where you need to cut to make this hole. Pipe look thing steam pipe all righty and of course I'm gonna have to do the this but I don't want to waste your time for now uh, the other thing that you can do here and maybe it's actually the best is because at this point I will bake it so, as I said, I'm going uh, to make uh, another, and it will be towards the evening, another live during the week, so we can be with it towards finish. And then I can show you separately how to do the, in a separate tutorial of some sorts, how to do this and how to do the closing with the um, magnetic with fabric armature and because here you'll have a fabric armature as well but this would be for now and as I said because of the nature of this on this one even if on the other ones we put the wax before but on these on these so-called pipes do not try to antique them until after they are baked because you're going to move them out of alignment so and uh, remember if you are in this clay ground in my facebook group i did uh, post the follow the next parts of the um, steampunk thing and it's making a butterfly and the fish and the an owl and it is i have a photo of the owl but i'm starting to get tired i've been on for one and a half hours so, uh, this one, I'm going to put resin on top, but before putting, when I'm going to put the resin on top, I'm going to make a little bit of a special effect to make it look like underwater. Okay, but this will be the very last thing after everything else is finished. And uh, the elements are going to be glued, and I'm going to use the... Um, uh, two parts um, glue and that one cannot really be baked so some of these elements will come on only after everything is baked everything is said and done so remember we are going to have something here as I said I'm going to place this maybe somewhere here maybe just leave this so you kind of need to have them a little bit maybe make another pipe here but now you know how to make the pipes that's why I wanted to make this to show you how to make the pipes because um, when you place these here this is the same exact kind of pipes only that they will be much smaller that's the making the exact type of pipes here I'm going to still bake this and I'll get these already done because it's useless to show you how to once again how to make pipes. It's just this only that it is uh, smaller and it, it will be uh, bent in half with two of these things right like see like when I make a, one of these I made the sausage for the main pipe let's say this would be the main pipe right and then I make the little overs here that will be much thinner and I'm not going to cut them in half I just want to show you in case you want to make a, a steampunk journal similar to this one because these Sundays used to be clay with me and a lot of people would actually clay with me but uh, 
to make this do practically let's say I get one here this is just fast made okay and I'm gonna get one here and place them before you put the little pipe on the and then get it like this so it will be pretty much something like this and then of course after it's baked you get to but extend it to go all the way in the middle and then go in like I did here make it go in the middle of the gear to look like a functioning exactly elbow connector so uh, okay I will announce at least a day in advance when the the life to put more elements on this will be before doing the finishing uh, thing so that we can have uh, next Sunday doing Valentine stuff and I'm sure going to show you something really interesting I promise you okay I'm going to go lay down now because my back started hurting the muscles remember I told you I have my muscles on my back and not compensate for the lack of that one so I do need to lay down if I'm too much sitting or too much standing this happens so thank you so much for being with me here don't forget to thumbs up and if you are new don't forget to like and subscribe I do one of these every Sunday at 12 30 central time and I shall see you all before uh, next Sunday when I'll do a short uh, live with what follows on these. Okay? Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. What's left of it? Thank you so much. I love you all. Goodbye.